Yeah, five o'clock. All set, Mike? Is anybody? Who's no. missing? Who's missing? Kevin. 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 Yeah. Enjoy. I'm here. He's there. there. He He's there. Hi. Hi. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Excellent. All right. All right. At this time, I'll uh, call to order the August 5th, 2014 meeting of the Acton School Committee. Are there any uh, adjustments to the agenda? Okay, then let's look at approval of the minutes of the meeting, the regular meeting of July 8th, 2014. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of July 8th and the executive session meeting of July 22nd. I second. I second. Okay. Seconded. We moved and seconded that we accept the uh, meetings of the regular the minutes of the regular meeting of July 8th and the executive session of July 22nd. Any discussion? All in favor? Is he raising his hand? Yes, he is. He is. He's voting. <laughs> yeah. Any comments from the public? <clears throat> yes, I just wanted to mention one thing that due to our small class sizes at the junior high level and Sanford Junior High School cutting soccer, this year I have invited the Sanford Junior High School soccer players to play with Acton as part of Acton's team oh. and I've had quite a great response so oh, far. Great. Um, they would have to provide their own transportation here for practices and games um, from 3 to 5 every day. but. So far, the response has been great, and it gives an opportunity for Sanford and Acton kids to play together before they actually go to high school and play together. It was this oh, boys yeah. and girls? Boys and girls, yeah. Oh. So an alert now went out to the Sanford community, and an alert now has gone out to the Acton community as well. So. All right, well, if you have an overwhelming response, would you have, like, cuts and all that? or have No. The, the expectation is that it's not going to be an overwhelming okay. response because it's going to be parents that have to oh, okay. provide the transportation. Yeah. Um, and not everyone's going to be able to do that. And the coach is okay with large numbers. Uh, and soccer, you can always go yeah. with large rosters, yeah. too. So oh, right now, we're just keeping it open to 7th and 8th graders. And the numbers are, are perfect right now. So. And, and the conference get, has been alerted they're okay with this? Yep. Okay. And the irony is how hard Tracy fought for just the opposite opportunity. It's only two years. Right. To have us go down there and play. For different okay. sports, right. Yeah. And now they're coming here. So <laughs> oh, that's kind of a great thing. That's yeah. good. That's awesome. <clears throat> Any other uh, comments from the public? Hearing none, let's go on. Any communication and correspondence? Yes, a couple more things. Um, there was a special education report um, that was delivered to me to give to you about the question that happened, the uh, school committee asked for an update on the special education enrollment, and this is the enrollment that has been uh, for 8-2014, uh, 57 students in total. Uh, we can pass that out. That was requested by someone on the board, I guess. Yep. Any other correspondence? Yes. I don't have access to this, do I? Pardon me? Do I have access to this report? Uh, it Look can be emailed to you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, and the other Thanks, report that I have is not a report, it's a letter that I have uh, sent to Mark and Marita Lowell. And uh, they were helpful to the physical education department by offering us nine tennis rackets that could be used by the students in physical education classes. And four of the rackets were brand new and five of the rackets were used but in very, very good shape. So this letter was sent to them, um, thanking them for their donation. Uh, I said that the value was not less than $100 in total. We will put them to good use in the physical education classes. You never know, the spark that is ignited when a first-time tennis player touches their first racket may eventually turn into a U.S. Open contender. Thanks again for your generosity. Any other correspondence? Nope. Uh, was that the, that was the uh, special education report? The first no. was a special education report, and if you didn't hear me, the second was the Lowell's gave us nine very good tennis rackets for the phys ed department. So the second correspondence was a thank you letter 
to uh, Percy and Marita Lowell for for their gift of their tennis rackets. Okay. Okay. They actually also donated a brand new soccer ball. They dropped it off and gave it to me one day. Okay. So oh. I put that in there with Kristen's stuff that she had mm -hmm. ordered for the summer. Good. Okay, we'll go on to the superintendent's report. Okay. Um, the thing that uh, we've worked uh, we've worked on many things this summer, very uh, uh, the planning and the organizing of the school to make everything ready for the second of uh, September. But one of the things that um, I'm really I'm very pleased with is the the way that the teacher evaluation committee is coming together and they're working very hard. They're meeting every two weeks. Um, but highlighting the work that they're doing, I want to announce that we're having a special mini conference, we'll call it, the state uh, associate, Mary Payne, who's in charge of helping school districts put together their teacher evaluation plans and then and inevitably uh, or, or eventually approve those plans. She has agreed to come down and visit with us 10 o'clock on the 14th here and we put out a, a request to other school districts and we've had uh, several RSVPs already and we're looking forward to this good conference to help us know where the state is, where we're at uh, in the various districts so that we can work on this <coughs> extremely valuable and timely program of teacher evaluation formulation um, so that it's completed by June as uh, requested by the state. So we're very we're asking again that uh, other folks in other districts join us, and I think we'll have a good try. I know some. I know there are some coming from Sat Six. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a very important. Well, everything that I do is, I think, very important to talk about. Is very important, but this is something that's different that I don't think the board and I expected uh, when I was happy to help you out uh, starting the. Uh, it was the 19th of August. Uh, I knew that I would have to be certified by the state of Maine, but I had been a superintendent in New York and been an assistant superintendent in New York for the better part of 10 years and didn't really think that it would be a problem getting certified, but I did go through the rigorous procedure that they had asked me to do and filed many, many uh, pieces of paper and, and memos and uh, descriptions of work that I had done, but it all came, kept coming back to one flaw in my resume and that's that I have not been a classroom teacher. Now, Maine has a state statute, not a regulation, but a state statute that says uh, that a superintendent cannot be a superintendent unless they've had three years of teaching in a classroom in a regular education setting. Now, I had many years of leading corporate entities and uh, forming strong organizations and having English as second language classes in one of my businesses that I uh, put together and sponsored and also gave seminars, <coughs> excuse me, in, in various management things, time management, other things. But these things that were private sector did not, in their mind, add up to three years of education, classroom experience. And since it's not a regulation, since there can't be much wiggle room, what's happened is that the state has finally determined, after analyzing all my credentials, that while I may be a capable person, I can't fill the role as a full-time or a part-time superintendent uh, because it would put myself or the school in jeopardy. Doesn't mean I can't help you in many ways, but I can't carry that time. So I've been working with the school committee about a plan which will enable them to move forward, me, me to continue to help you, uh, but also not put the school at risk and not put me at risk uh, for uh, not being properly credentialed. So I'll turn it over to um, Mrs. Shane, the board uh, school committee president, as to her description of what they think a new role could be based on this development. Well, in executive session earlier before this meeting, the school committee um, voted to uh, have Betsy Sancia come back one half day a week as our official superintendent. Um, she's going to be coming back on a per diem basis. Uh, just to help us out in the interim. Um, we also uh, voted to have Penn continue on a per diem basis at this time, uh, working on 
specific issues that we put in to work on. And we are going to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Advertise. Advert we're going to advertise uh, right away for an interim superintendent for a year. Um, and, and when the interim superintendent, when we find an interim superintendent, then he will replace. He or she. He or she. <laughs> <laughs> We'll replace <coughs> the two people that we have per diem that are going to be helping us out in the immediate future. So that's... And we're also doing a study, pro, uh, what was it, we're, the we're positional also, we're analysis. We're also looking at, uh, Kevin, maybe you could explain that, uh, to what, what we're looking at with your friend Bill. Um, so I think a year or so ago, I don't know who's in the room, but um, a colleague of mine, uh, not, not of, a, of a different company um, who does um, a variety of work with districts across the, the country, um, specializes in, um, in part in, uh, in doing positional analysis, analyses of um, all different positions um, within school districts. And um, he came, I think, uh, a year or so ago to sort of chat with the administrative team about um, that kind of work. And I'm going to contact him to see if he is available to look at um, the needs of uh, acting given its unique nature and to sort of see um, what actually are the needs of for the superintendency in regards to acting. So. Right. We've, we've just, An outside person who can look at it we've objectively. We've discussed several things. Do we, do we need a superintendent, in-house superintendent? Could we contract with Sanford? Could we change our positions around a little bit and maybe look at a combination Correct. superintendent principal and then hire uh, somebody to do to be like a curriculum coordinator that would be like an assistant principal we've, we've looked at all kinds of different things to see what would best fit Acton um, best fit our needs here and hopefully after he comes he'll have some uh, some advice for us as to what would be the best way for us to look and forward so that's that's one of the main reasons that we're when we advertise, we're looking for an interim superintendent uh, for, the, for the year so that we can see where we are. If we get an interim superintendent who meets all of our needs, then we might want to continue with that person if they were interested. But this is what we're looking at is the short term for this coming school year to see what we can, what we can work up. Uh, I'd like to mention that in the interim, it, the work with Betsy and myself will be budget neutral because um, we have, there wouldn't be any. Uh, and what we've done is I was two and a half day, now I'll be two day, and she'll be half day. So it works budget wise. Uh, there may be some people that are concerned that uh, we haven't budgeted for more management. Okay. So you're all done with your report? Um, I don't want to forget the gentleman standing there with the earphones on. <laughs> Everyone is doing wonderful work, but uh, one person who's kind of working all by himself is Michael Corey. Single-handedly brought a hundred new computers online, or more than a hundred, while he's also assisting the teachers with the installation and training for the Empower program for the automated report card system. And um, Michael, we really appreciate this. The summer days aren't long enough, and but we're very appreciative of the work you're doing for us. And thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions of Ken on his report? Um, I have a, uh, just a comment um, okay. in, in regards to what he, the, the early part of his report. Maybe it's for later, but again, because I have to um, bug out a little bit early. Um, I'm wondering, and maybe this is for the policy committee, maybe this is for new work, but, but um, and I say this not having done my um, homework fully yet, but I'm thinking it's probably important, and I'm curious what others think, that as the, um, it sounds like good work is taking place in regards to um, the evaluation work, um, I'm thinking it behooves the school committee to look at the current policies to see if one um, want to create or revise our existing policy um, in regards to that so that it's supportive of, of that work given the move to proficiency based learning and a lot of the changes around evaluation I want to make sure that our policy kind of is um, 
you know, supports the vision we want moving forward in regards to what kind of data we use and those sorts of things. So um, I'm thinking that should be an agenda item um, upcoming. For our next meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Maybe, maybe next meeting is we look at existing policy and then take next steps mm -hmm. from there. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I haven't got my page here, but I know the next thing's probably the principal's report. Administrative reports. There you go. Mm -hmm. Skipping over progress monitoring, strategic plans, you're skipping over all that? Um, whatever yes. we'll have in the way of dovetail discussions uh, uh, have sort of started already by me mentioning the eval committee and the fact that uh, the school committee wants me to concentrate on strategic plan uh, as part of my two days. Uh, but there's nothing really to report from yeah. us other than what the administrative report shows. But this strategic plan update, we are going to have a Saturday meeting, 920, just so we have that in the minutes. Okay. That's sufficient. 920. And what was the time? What time did we set for that? We didn't really set a time. We didn't set a time. We just set the date, right? Yeah. So, like, 9, nine to 12 or something like that is what yeah. we were thinking, or 9 to noon? Yeah. What day is this? The 20th. September. September 20. Uh, yeah, if I've gotten on hold. Yes. So say 9 to 12? Yes. 9 to 12. AM, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you got? Okay, this is so Okay, so in my report, I have first of all the what if meeting had a second uh, round um, and as I said in my report one of the conversations that came out of that was how do we provide more enrichment for our students and the conversation was led to um, looking into the week after school gets out offering a one week kind of rec enrichment camp um, I, I've listed uh, Lori Williams, Matt Pettis, Melinda Van Howard and Eileen Worcester have agreed to work together come up with a couple of different scenarios to propose that I could help them work through, kind of give a trial run for what it would look like if we could offer summer programming beyond just summer school for half a day. Um, conversation came up that after I get the proposals and work with them, you know, we would probably even look to the town because usually rec programs are actually run through the town. But this would give a trial run. We'd get feedback from parents. We'd look at meeting the needs of parents um, as well as students. So that was a real exciting um, meeting. And the group is, is not the same every time. People come as they can, and um, I've gotten phone calls and emails for those that couldn't make it before, but want to be kept in the loop. Um, so it's going to be real, it's a real grassroots. It's really led by the parents and imagining what their school could provide. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to be sharing with them what I just shared with you is the draft of, of, of where we are headed for the strategic plan, because I think the group's thoughts belong also in the strategic planning, you know, of what, of what acting, acting could provide. Um, PE Health, um, with the, the resignation of Kristen, um, we have advertised and are getting now um, applications in for people who are or could be um, duly certified so that if we continue on our interest um, road of having health for our students, we would have somebody who is certified in both to offer that as part of our future curriculum. Um, so very excited about that. Um, I know that many people think that the summer months are, are quiet and relax, uh, relaxing by any pool of, <coughs> excuse me, any body of water, um, but you would be amazed at how many um, staff members are in the building, are doing work on their own, are sharing online, attending meetings, attending workshops, uh, we had teacher leader meeting, we had um, a retreat for the 6-8 teachers. Um, as Ken mentioned, the evaluation work continues. Um, it has been an amazing, and even Mike and I, you know, we worked on the structural part of this uh, strategic plan together. Um, 
So much of what happens in the summer months is not solo work. It's not just getting lesson plans ready for an individual classroom, but it's requiring a lot a, of partnerships and, and teams to work together. And, and the teachers are doing that. It's just amazing um, how much is going on behind the scenes when everybody is supposedly off for the summer. Um, and so what I gave to you is a sample of where, where we're still building. Um, what, when you get a chance, this is also online on Google Drive. So as teams get developed and start working on their individual objectives under the goals, um, part of what that planning um, will need to be is um, moving things around, making sure they're under the right objectives, making sure the action plans are doable, who's, um, who's assigned to be responsible for them, is there a budget cost that comes with it, um, the timeline pieces will need to be filled out. But this is starting to give structure um, and I'm hoping that um, as we develop mini work groups on particular areas, um, we'll start to see this fill out and then we can really have a, a three to five year plan of where Acton is going and goals that are set are met. Any questions? Anybody got any questions? Looks good. It's nice to see it moving along. Yep. Okay. Let's move on to Kim, please. Um, basically, over the last three weeks, um, an audit was completed. Uh, I attended a week long grant writing workshop with Lisa DeWitt. And this last week, I've been completing all the annual filing requirements for Meadows and main pars and everybody. The audit went really well. Um, they really do like our newer software. <laughs> they appreciate it. As, as do you. Right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Um, one of the there were two requirements, and I'm not sure where the management letter. I have not seen it yet, but we should be seeing the management letter. But. Um, they would like us to have an accounting policy um, regarding our fund balance, you know, before the before next year. Um, we also need for the state for our special ed grants. We also have to have uh, a complete accounting policy. So how we do our purchase orders, you know, all our step by steps, what we do with cash, what we do with, and I do have a draft from a school that that we get from the state that is very good and it's just a matter of going through and tailoring it to what Acton needs and um, when when I kind of get done with a little draft I will give it to Ken so he can present it to the policy committee and mm -hmm. and you guys can go from there it is something that is required by November 30th for us to continue with our special education grants so that's definitely the first policy I'll work on and then the fund balance policy, I also have a, a something that RHR Smith would like us to follow. So again, we'll do the same process, tailor it, I'll give it to Ken, and then I'll go to the policy committee. Um, so that's, as, and I, I believe also the town's audit went really well. Everything matched from the school to the town without a problem, so that was good. Uh, Lisa DeWitt and I went to USM for a week we received a lot, we got a nice book. <laughs> There's a lot of websites in it. Um, so regarding anything with grants, including the federal state foundation grants um, and other types of grants that are available out there. The, we each had to have a specific project for our class and um, I did a research project that was specifically on alternative fuel, source, fuel sources. So other ways to look at electricity and our heating system um, to see if there's greener ways that we can do it and I kind of looked at those two because those two alone are about a hundred thousand dollars in our budget so um, and I was hoping that you know working with Andy and um, Mary as far as our long-term planning goal that because it's something that would have to really be explored first um, certain things I was looking at, I knew that uh, Colby College was going to put some very huge 
you know, solar panel type systems and stuff like that. I'd be kind of curious to see how they actually make out, uh, considering Maine and winter and everything else. Um, so there's something to explore. And other than that, our office is, you know, packing up all last year's stuff, putting it away, getting everything, you know, in line with all our books for this year, and just doing all the required said filings. I have a lot of August 25th deadlines to meet for medums and everything else. So that's my life. <laughs> I'd like to comment that Kim probably wouldn't tell you this, but she and Lisa were at the top of the class, at the, no, near the top of the class at, at, the, at the program. Uh, there were 21 uh, yeah. students. Yeah, yeah no, they did well. Our two ladies did extremely well in the yeah. squad. We had fun. We had a lot of fun. That doesn't surprise me too much. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to, to do that. I think it's the more awareness we can get about what grants are available and the more grants we can apply for, the more we can pick up, fill some of the gaps that our budget can't, pick can't, up. Yeah. can't fill. Yeah. So, and add some of the things back on that, that we're Be missing nice to that have. we'd like to have. Yeah. yeah. I know when I used to go to summer camp, we used to have these lists, and the list would say things that you need to bring, and then beside that would be a list of not necessary but nice to have. Mm -hmm. It would be things like a flashlight and <laughs> clothes and yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, that's the way I look at grants. They give mm -hmm. us the ability to to provide things that are be nice to have, very nice to have, and to enrich our program. All right, Michael. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> as Ken mentioned, I have been s deploying the uh, devices and systems for next year. Um, the new servers in place. I've now counted over 220 devices I've updated. Um, I'm anticipating 250 total devices in the school more than kids <laughs> when you start looking at it. Um, every teacher is going to be receiving a new laptop if they haven't already. Every classroom teacher is also going to be receiving a document camera and those who request one can get one. Um, special ed, specialists, uh, the library. Um, it's basically a digital overhead projector that can be utilized for looking at a book, writing on a piece of paper, you can even use it as a webcam to project um, just a video or image. Um, what else? I'm deploying, at, right now I'm push, putting projectors in classrooms and I'm installing new ones in the computer lab, the library, and wherever there are uh, permanent projectors installed. Um, and that will probably be my projects for next, next week. Hopefully I'll have that finished by next week. So every teacher will receive, every classroom teacher will receive a projector um, as well. Uh, professional development will also be rolled out at the end of this month uh, from Apple and myself. Um, <clears throat> we'll be learning the ins and outs of um, some of the Mac software that's available on these laptops. Um, and I'm also going to be organizing different trainings that are going to be continuous throughout the year. Um, Google Drive, Google Calendar, a lot of Google tools. Um, we'll get into Microsoft Office. The uh, document cameras will be part of the training sessions. Um, probably smart boards. I'm going to try to have professional development throughout the year um, covering all technology resources we have available and then some. Um, and then we will also be looking into educate, empower, I don't know what they're calling themselves right now, um, which is a standards-based reporting data gathering system that we can utilize as our um, report card as well. Um, as of now, and this isn't, none of this is solidified because I don't even have the software yet, um, but it seems as if K through five are ready and willing to utilize the software for their um, <coughs> report card needs. Um, six or eight are going to go through a transition period. Um, they're going to continue using their current Ipini Campus um, reporting 
and they're going to start trying to integrate their assignments or the curriculum into the educated power system um, to report their standards. Uh, we're going to work on a timeline and um, you know goals, objectives with a team, some of which are here in the public. Um, so there's not a lot on my report, but th there's a lot of work involved, and it's not just me. It's there's, there's teams, there's effort, there's groups of people um, advising, supporting, and communicating on all of it. So. Um, hopefully everything will come together before the first progress report needs to roll out the door. Um, of course it will. Yes. So that's that's all I have to report on right now. Thank you. So, uh, so as I look at your report, I'm just wondering like how many beach days you've had this summer? Not many. No. Um, two or three beach days. Um, I, I, I vacationed at the end of last week. I'm vacationing tomorrow until the end of this week. And then it's just, you know, gung ho until opening day, pretty much. And then hopefully you can just breathe a little bit. Deep breath, huh? For, yeah, a little breathing for everybody, hopefully, mm -hmm. by that time. Anybody have any uh, questions for Mike? Um, I've just... got two comments because i got to leave in a few minutes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, first one is just an awesome job, uh, Mike. The uh, I, I think Mike's reference mention of all the professional development that's going to happen later on in the summer, I think is just a good opportunity, um, again, for the administration to, particularly with professional development, to really sort of see how the professional development supports the strategic plan and to try to make those connections as explicit as possible to staff. Wanna, um, I, I think, again, it's an opportunity for the vision to become clear, to make sure that the PD is really aligned with the strategic goals. It, it just helps everything be as cohesive as possible. So if that's going to happen, um, just an encouragement that all of that is t as tightly connected as possible. Listening to the PD, it sounds like it's great. Just, again, if we can use it as an opportunity to support the strategic plan and the mission, knowing the strategic plan is still evolving. Um, so that, that's the first comment. The other one is, I feel a little reluctant to say this, but... Um, and again, this comes after Mike, uh, again, doing another good job with the, 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 the report and the good reports we just had. Um, we meet on Tuesdays as a school committee every every month, correct? I know the answer to that. That's a yes. Um, the, uh, Ken, when do you typically send us the report, uh, send us the packets? You deliver them, which I really appreciate again, by the way. Uh, been doing I usually try to do it on Thursdays. Thank you for that. Thursday before. Both Say that again? Uh, usually I do it on Thursday, sometimes Friday. Um, gotcha. Third, yeah, I do it both uh, electronically and by Pony Express on usually on Thursdays, Thursday afternoon, sometimes Friday mornings if if we have late breaking information. That sounds that sounds great, and that's been my recollection. Um, the reason I bring it up is I don't think we've had all the reports once since um, in the past year um, in the packets, and it's been bothering me for some time. And I frankly think it's unprofessional. Um, so I'm. I'm, I'm I want to just put on the record that I would like the entire administrative team to really strive for the next year to have the reports in on time. Sometimes, because um, again, some of us like to work electronically and having the papers and having to move around papers when we're in the, in the school committee meetings, again, is a hassle. And I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for the reports in on time. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. So, sorry to have to leave on that note, but um, it's good to hear you all and see. All I can see is, uh, is that Miss Packard over there? That yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, good to see you all, and I'll see you um, probably sooner than later. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. I just wanted to say uh, thank you. I know technology myself, and um, it is a lot of work, and the students are really going to be excited about it, so thank you. <laughs> Teachers should be excited about it too. They're all getting these Love new projectors mm -hmm. and new laptops. And document the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like like Christmas over here. Yeah, right? that's, that's <laughs> the one thing about my my responsibility here is nobody complains because they get new toys all the time. But until <laughs> yeah. so they don't no, work, <laughs> that's, my, that's my only goal is to make them work all the time. But as long as I can do that, then good, nobody has anything bad to say. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Mike. Good job, as always. Yep. Andrew. Um, as I mentioned in my report, um, we're plugging plugging away at the uh, summer cleaning program. 
Um, right now we're really focused on floor care. Uh, the floor care is one thing that we kind of have to schedule around the extended school year program. Um, but I'm pretty confident by the beginning of next week the floor, floor care will be done. Sanford Flooring is installing uh, carpet in two classrooms. Um, they started today, they'll be complete tomorrow. Uh, the gym floor is done. Um, we have accomplished a lot more painting in the building this year than I had anticipated. And the reason for that is because the custodial staff has worked so well together this year as a team. Um, they, they have been very independently finding areas that need improvement and um, just tackling them as a team. Um, typically I try to get like three or four classrooms a year painted and they have done the hallways, they've done the music room, they did Mr. LaBranche's room, they did the office in the kitchen today, they did, I'm going to forget some of the ones that they did, but they, they have just exceeded what I was hoping to get accomplished um, with that this year. So, um, very happy with that and also um, along with the teamwork approach comes um, some some of them have more experience than others so they're sharing that that knowledge so that they're all getting to the same level and it's really it's really been effective this year um, the other thing I mentioned in my report is that we have locked in on our oil price at 327 a gallon with Sanford um, the um, business administrator had spoken with Ken initially um, I followed up with Sanford with um, with them and then once we had the contracted price, Kim and I got together and and um, did a did a uh, PO for it. And um, always glad once we're locked in, it's kind of a sigh of relief because when we budget, we don't know. And as I mentioned before, it gets pushed later some years, which this year is one of those years. Um, so always glad to have that that taken care of. What we budget? We budgeted 375. Yeah. So that is helpful. Who's the company? Uh, CN Brown. Um, Johnson and Jordan started the preventative maintenance on the boilers today. Um, I've also scheduled for, um, they're gonna replace the other AC unit in the lab, which we budgeted for this year. Um, what else? Just, uh, we're very busy and we're watching our window shrink daily because we know that ready or not things are going to roll and and uh what's the first teacher day the 27th and 28th yeah. yeah. so we have them here computer. monday and tuesday 25th and yes. 26th is when they'll come in for some training and then 27th 28th. 27th is the official first teacher workshop day is, is that the day that you invite us to breakfast and to do our building walkthrough and all that stuff. That's what I was getting at. Uh, Is that what you were getting at? Yeah. Um, it will be either Wednesday or Thursday. We were also waiting to hear from Sanford, who was supposed to be offering some Empower training, and they were talking about doing it one of those two days. All right, just email us. So, yeah. Yep, I will. So. Yeah, but I'd, I'd like love to have any of the school committee members that are interested just to come and walk through the building once we're finished. Um, it's something that we typically do and uh, gives you folks a chance to see, you know, what we do and what we, what we strive for. And um, yeah, I started uh, last week sending out correspondence to teachers, letting them know that their rooms were complete. And I try to do that as we, we um, pluck them off. And Where were the rugs being replaced? Uh, this year we did the music room. The music, yeah. And uh, Christy King's room, which was the, one of the last rooms in the 78 wing. I have kind of an unrelated question. Um, I know the Day of Caring is coming up in September, and you guys do such a great job. Um, I don't know if you started to think about what projects volunteers could do on that Day of Caring. Just wanted to bring that up as kind of a side note. Yeah, yeah we're going to be a harder school than most. <laughs> I know, because it's beautiful. <laughs> so I, um, I'm meeting with Jan and Bill, and, and Andy's part of that conversation on Thursday morning. You can feel free to join us if you're not busy. So um, they're from the Retired Association, and so they're coming to, to talk just about that, about what else would we want. I talked to um, June Arbello about the hoop houses 
mm -hmm. that they did at her, her school. Um, so we have less um, repair yeah. than other schools might have. Some of them were in desperate need of painting, things were falling. So we get to actually go the other direction and think. Enhance. We, enhance, yeah, yeah. What, what else, you know, grounds-wise as well as, uh, matter of fact, one of the things we have to look into is the nature trail. Whether we could revive that, or whether well, now they got the snowshoes, we got to use them. Yeah. <laughs> so, very excited about that. New chariot trails. Oh, good. And I mentioned to uh, Andy that uh, something both he and I want to accomplish, and maybe you, um, if you know the number or the or the name of the individual uh, that Colby uh, was it Colby College where the award was given? Yes. Uh, where the association uh, gave the award to Jim. Uh, they said they would be. Happy to visit with us at a board meeting. Yeah, well, I, Can I reach them again. I've been bouncing some emails back and forth with the um, facility director from Portland, Doug Sh Sherwood, mm -hmm. um, and Jim R Jim Remy is actually the person who will be presenting, um, and Doug is in, has been in contact with him. What they would like to do initially was they they would have they they offered to come down to do a presentation for the board. And now they're thinking what they would like to do is do it at a at a um, school assembly, so that the students would be part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still trying to iron out a date um, in order to make that happen. So okay. it would be nice if if that happens if we could have either Channel Six or Channel Thirteen or some coverage to give the school some good publicity at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But as soon as I as soon as I shore up a date, I'll definitely I'll let you know and and uh, okay. I'll keep everyone in tune. Thank you. And just a another unrelated question: the, I'm on the long-term planning committee now. Yep. Are you going to send out notes for when those meetings are? Yeah, start probably or? once school starts and we get back into the. Well, we're going to do a summer one just to meet with the administrators. We, you know, in the next three weeks or right before okay. school starts. So. We, ha we have to do that to like set our own, own agenda or what we okay. want to do. But yep. I think in the next three weeks we should meet. Okay. Just for now. Okay. So you'll just send Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've already uh, any, any student data that. or upcoming data? The long term data. we got to I'll have um, Lisa do it passed this off to me. It had student names on it, so I had to photocopy without the student names. She has asked um, that she and Sylvia come and present in the September meeting the overall program, but she did give me um, a paper copy of data for the summer program that we had done the grant for, Title I Step Up. Um, and so this is for your um, enjoyment, if you will. You can see that the um, percentage of increase in decoding words in that middle level the average was 19%. Um, a lot of students did exceptionally well. Everyone improved. Um, so again, I nice. gave you. A, she gave me just a paper copy. I don't have an electronic one, so um, I'll have to ask her for that without the student names in order to share with um, others. But it does give you an idea of what the full weeks of that extra time did for those students. And like I said, um, she and Sylvia have requested to do a full presentation in September. Are these um, this year's kindergarten kids or next year's? These are kids who've just finished kindergarten just and finished going kindergarten. into first grade. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. And they loved it. Absolutely did not want to miss a day. Tremendous improvement in each one. Yeah. We had one boy who gave up Funtown Splashdown. Hmm. Told his dad, sorry, can we go after school? I'll go, but I can't miss summer school. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, very cool. So I'm excited for them to share the details. Okay, so we'll plan on that at, for our celebration of learning in yep. uh, September. Mm -hmm. Any reports from the long-term planning? No? Not this evening. Nope. Uh, the policy committee? No. no not tonight. Is there any... But what Kevin said, we have to look at yeah, we have to look those policies to look at and what right. Kim said. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll pull them out so that you have the policies that Kim mentioned and the ones that Kevin's. Okay, unfinished business. Any? 
Um, let's go on to new business. I think we've taken care of 11 1. So 11 2 is not a happy yeah. new business. This is the, I wanted to say this communication for this item. This is a seven year employee who we're going to sorely miss. Kristen Gallipo has sent you her resignation. An exciting new career option for her um, out of education entirely. But we don't have to accept this and then she has to work, <laughs> right? Is that how it goes? <laughs> I, I could always get a hold of her and tell her that the board refused to accept her resignation. It would work for me. All She's too much. Right. Seriously, I will make a motion to accept her resignation with regret. And much sadness. Add that. I second that. <laughs> Moved by Mary and seconded by Jeanette that we accept Kristen's resignation with much regret and sadness. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four. We don't need any further executive session, do we? No. No? Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I do have a question. You skipped okay. over 10 to resignation from administrator. Is that not something that no. needs to be on here? No. That was uh, incorrect. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Any? Okay. Was moved by who? Me. And seconded by Jeanette. <laughs> Diana, whoever. <laughs> All in favor to adjourn. Yay. So moved.